Friendship isn't about who you know the longest, it's about who came and never left your side. So that brings me to talk about today's video, one of the best bass singers from the greatest musical group of all time, Melvin Blue Franklin. Real quick, let's take a second to announce our giveaway. We are giving out a $100 gift card to Amazon to enter, like this video, and follow us on Instagram. And while you're here, you should consider supporting us on Patreon to receive a future shout out on our next video. Now, cue that intro. Rose English was a teenager in Mobile, Alabama. She would have a non-consensual relationship with a preacher at her family's church. On October 12, 1942, she would give birth to one of the best bass singers ever, David English. Following the birth of a legend, Rose would marry Rilla Franklin. Now, as newlyweds, they was looking for a new place for their family. They was planning to move to Detroit, Michigan, but David's grandmother would insist to Rose that David should stay with her. Now David would finally move to Detroit with his mother and stepfather at the age of 10 in 1952. Now a teenager in Detroit, he would grow in an attraction for music. His favorite color was blue, so everyone called him blue. He would go by the stage name Melvin Franklin and join a bunch of local groups in the Detroit area. One group included the Voice Masters with Lamont Dozier and David Ruffin. He will also perform with the future temptation Richard Street, who is his cousin. And a fun fact, in the earlier years, Blue will refer David as his cousin too. In 1958, Blue would graduate from Northwestern High School and that same year he would meet Otis Williams who attended the same high school. The first time these two met, it didn't go well. Blue thought Otis was a gang member who wanted to rob him, so he would take off running. Otis would eventually catch up with Blue and ask him to join his group after he heard him sing one day. Otis and Blue would become real close friends. In fact, they had a lot of things to bond on. Otis' mother would get married and move to Detroit, leaving Otis in Texas with his grandparents. Otis didn't move to Detroit until he was 10 years old. The same with Blue. I was impressed with Melvin when I heard him sing with a group called Voice Masters, and at the time he was 16 years old. And to hear a 16 year old young boy with a bass sounding like an old man, I had to meet him. Cause at that time I was in need of a bass singer from my group before Melvin joined. So at this time, Otis group was called the El Domingos. This group would consist of Al Bryan, James Preeby Crawford, Bernard Plain, and Arthur Walton. Now, those three guys will eventually be replaced by Blue, Richard Street, and Mooch Harrell. They will go on to record songs for Johnny Mae Matthews, the record label, Northern Records. She will also change the group's names to The Distance. The Distance will record the song Come On in 1959. This will become a local hit causing Warwick Records to pick up the song for national distribution rights. In 1960, The Distance will record the song, All Right. And after the release of this song, Johnny May will make Otis the group leader and rename the group to Otis Williams and The Distance. Now the group really didn't see a lot of success on the record sales side, but even though they had two local hits, they still caught the eye of Barry Gordy. He would offer the group a contract with Motown, but Richard Street and Mooch Harrell would lead the group, leaving them two members short. This would put a hold on the group for signing to Motown, as they would need to find two more members. One day, Otis would receive a phone call from Eddie Kendricks, and Otis was telling Eddie that he really wanted him to be a part of the group and be the group's lead singer. Eddie will only agree if Otis allowed his best friend Paul Williams to join the group as well. So now Otis agreed 
and now they're going by the name the elders now a lot of these group names back then was reused as Richard Street he would have his own group called Richard Street in the distance they will go down to Hitsville USA to audition for Barry Gordy and other Motown executives Barry he was impressed on the hearing section but he wasn't filling the group's name so he would suggest that they would step outside and find a better name before sundown and from that moment forward history was made as they would come up with the name the temptations the edsels the pontiacs the coveers uh, no 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 the radicals nah. the spectacles testicles in late 1960, Blue went to the doctors and he was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So now the group will release two singles in 1961 called Old Mother of Mine and Check Yourself that was sung by Paul Williams. These songs didn't do too well due to them being released on the Barry Gordy side label called Miracle Records. He would re-sign the group to his newly imprinted label called Motown. In 1962, the Temptations will release a song called Your Dream Come True that reached number 22 on the R&B charts. That was the group's only success at the time as through the years of 1961 and 1963 they would record 8 songs to no success. So at this time Al he was growing frustration towards the group lack of success as he still had to work his day job. So one day during the Christmas concert hosted by Motown Al and Paul would get into an altercation thus getting him kicked out the group by who you may ask yes you guessed right by Otis the temptations will bring in the new year of 1964 with a bang they were introduced David Ruffin as the temptation new member this creating the class of five era the temptations will get to work right away as Smokey Robinson will write a song for Eddie Kendricks called the way you do the things you do that became the group's first hit to reach number 20 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. They will release more songs such as Girl Why You Wanna Make Me Blue, I Be In Trouble and The Girls Are Right With Me, which starred Eddie Kendricks as lead singer. Smokey Robinson, who wrote most of the Tetasha's earlier hits, had seen something in David Ruffin, so he would write the song My Girl Just For David. This was a success and gave The Temptations their very first number one hit on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And the success of this song will push Eddie back and move David forward as a new lead singer for The Temptations. Now with Blue having arthritis, he will take cortisol so he could still perform. With the use of this medication, this will cause Blue to get diabetes. The group will go on to release three other songs that was written by Smokey Robinson that had David Ruffin as lead singers. These songs are It's Growing that reached 18 on the Billboard Hot 100. Since I Lost My Baby, they reached 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. And My Baby, they reached 13 on the Billboard Hot 100. Norman Whitfield had a request for Barry Gordy. Basically, he wanted to work with The Temptations. But Barry would tell Norman that he could only work with the group if Smokey next song for the group don't reach the top 20 on the charts. Then he could become The Temptations' permanent songwriter and producer. So you know Norman was probably hoping for the song not to do good. The group was working on a song that Smokey Robinson had wrote for them. This song was Get Ready that starred Eddie Kendricks as lead singer. Now this song was reached number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Norman would get to work right away as he is now the songwriter and producer for The Temptations. He would write and produce my favorite song for The Temptations called Ain't Too Proud to Beg. This song has starred David Ruffin as lead singer. This song was also more successful than Get Ready. This song reached number 13 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, but number one on the R&B charts. Norman wanted to change the sound of The Temptations. He would add more of a bass to the music along with a lot of soul. Basically, he went for a James Brown sound. Norman will follow up the success of Ain't Too Proud to Bag with hits like Beauty Is Only Skin Deep that reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. I know I'm losing you that reached number eight on the Billboard Hot 100 charts and 
All I Need that also reached number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. The Class of 5 era would release 6 albums together, including Meet the Temptations that were released in 1964, The Temptations Scene Smokey that were released in 1965 along with The Tempted Temptations, Getting Ready that were released in 1966, The Temptations with a Lot of Soul that were released in 1967, The Temptations Wish It Would Rain that were released in 1968. Now, during the year of 1967, trouble started to develop with David Ruffin as he would begin missing rehearsals and refusing to ride the same limo as the other four Temptations. David would suggest to Barry Gordy that the group should be named David Ruffin and the Temptations. And we all know this was the last straw for Otis. How dare you try to take his group? I'm the one selling the records. They coming to see me. They coming to see the Temptations. Ain't nobody coming to see you, Otis. Early June 1968, David would mix an important showing that was hosted by Dean Martin's daughter, Barbara Gal Martin. Otis was done with David after this, so on June 27, 1968, the group made the final decision to fire David. Are you crazy? I'm sorry. Y'all are stupid. Get off me. Y'all ain't nothing without me. I made your asses. You can't fire me. But David Ruffin's actions outside the stage didn't fit with the group's image. The group's image was very important to Blue and Otis. So many changes in, in all group personnel. You two have been here since the beginning. How have you been able to maintain? We talked about all the different eras of music. How did you do it? You know, uh, I think that we've been very fortunate. You know, the people seem to enjoy what the Temptations represent. I can tell because you always have us on your show. <laughs> Now, just a day later, June 28, 1968, Otis had his eyes on Dennis Edwards, who was a member of the Contours. Otis would pull some strings to get Dennis to the Temptations. And on July 9th, the Temptations would officially announce Dennis Edwards as a member of the group. While performing, David would sneak on stage and snatch the mic from Dennis. Now, for more information on the life and career of David Ruffin in this situation, Check out the story of David Ruffin above, right after this video. Blue will have his chance to sing lead on a song called I Truly Truly Believe. If you haven't heard it, you should check it out. It really shows how much talent he had. He was really the backbone of The Temptations. In late 1968, The Temptations were linked up with Diana Ross and The Supremes. They recorded an album together called Diana Ross and The Supremes Join The Temptations. A fun fact, Blue, he had a little thing with Mary Wilson. With Dennis Edwards replacing David Ruffin and becoming the new lead singer, this would change the whole sound of The Temptations. As Dennis, coming from a church background, singing in his father's choir, Dennis' voice was more preacher-like. Like, it was very strong, but it wasn't bad, as they would record the song Cloud Nine, which brought the group its very first Grammy Award. 1969-1970 was the year of The Temptations as they would release hit after hit with four songs that was on the top 10 of Billboard's Hot 100 charts. Leading the way was I Can't Get Next To You that reached number one. Around this time, Paul, he was battling with sickle cells and also he had developed an alcohol problem. So Paul, he would fall into a deep depression. Now Otis, he would recall that Paul would only be drinking milk. So for him to go from drinking milk to drinking alcohol, something really must be going wrong. Paul, he won't be able to perform on most nights, so Otis will hire Richard Street as a backup replacement for Paul. Through the year of 1970 and 1971, Eddie began not seeing eye to eye with the group. With his best friend Paul Helps declining and the fire on David Ruffin, Eddie will often pick fights with Otis and Blue. Sometimes they got physical. Eddie will say that he no longer felt that he had a say so what was going on with the group. From everything from the decisions were made through Otis and Blue. He will also be the only member from the group to stay in contact with David, even trying to get him being put back into the group. He also had some beef going on with Barry Gordy and Motown as he felt Motown was cheating the group out their finances. But in 1971, Paul would get the news from his doctor and that they found a spot on his lungs, so he would have to retire from doing music. 
Before Eddie would leave the group, he would record the song It Was Just My Imagination. They would replace Eddie with Damon Harris, and Paul would be officially replaced with Richard Street. Now Eddie, he would leave on a bang, giving him a number one record on his way out the door. In 1972, The Temptations would have no choice but to follow that song up with Papa Was a Rolling Stone. This song would reach number one on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. Now, if you ask some people who sung that song, people will say Dennis Edwards. But what most people don't realize is that the second verse on that song is all Richard Street. Papa Was a Rolling Stone won The Temptations that second Grammy Award. Around 1973, tensions between Norman Whitfield and The Temptations began to grow as the group believed Norman was being too difficult to work with. Now Otis, he fired Damon Harris during the recording of the song, A Song For You, as Otis believed his behavior and his work ethic was unprofessional. In 1977, The Temptations were signed to Atlantic Records. They were released two songs under Atlantic, but these songs was a failure. In 1978, an incident with Blue would happen as he tried to stop someone from stealing his car, and as a result, he was shot in the leg and the hand. This would put him on bed rest as he couldn't go on tour with The Temptations in Poland. Aladdin would release The Temptations in 1979. In 1980, Motown would re The Temptations and they would go through a lineup change again as they would let go Lewis Price and rehire Dennis Edwards. Barry Gordy would write and produce the song Power that is named after their first album back on Motown. This song was a failure. It didn't even crack the top 40 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart but it did reach 11 on the R&B charts. Barry will begin to think that maybe the Temptations era is over. He would try one more thing as Motown began planning a reunion tour with all the Temptation members. During the 80s, Blue battle with arthritis and diabetes began to take a toll on him as he was still taking cortisone so he could still do what he loves best. But the use of this medication, this will weaken his immune system and open up the doors for any other health problems and infections to happen more. He would get a flesh eating disease. And in my opinion, Blue's the strongest temptation. He was going through all these health problems but never let it get in his way. And he would still go out there every day and perform. Now that's what you call dedication. But in 1982, the temptations would begin working on their reunion album. Eddie Kendricks and David Ruffin would rejoin the group for the album and tour. Barry would link the temptations up with Motown biggest funk artist Rick James. They would begin recording the song standing on top. That reached number six on the R&B charts. The Temptations would provide backup vocals for Rick James' song "Super Free." And fun facts: Blue provided background vocals and ad libs on Rick James' song "Give It To Me, Baby." Go ahead and have a listen after this video. Another fun fact is that the relationship between Rick James and Blue is that they are cousins, but Blue will refer to Rick James as his nephew. The reunion tour was a success financially but it ended up causing a lot of problems between the group members. Eddie Kendrick's years of smoking had caught up to him. He's not able to give us some beautiful high notes anymore. Blue, he would have oxygen tanks on the side of the stage to help him breathe between songs. David Ruffin began missing performances again, and Dennis Edwards and Glenn Leonard, they would cause more problems by showing up late to rehearsals. After the tour, David and Eddie was relieved from their position and they started touring together as a duo. Now, for more information on the life and career of Eddie Kendricks, check out his video in the description below, right after this video. In 1983, The Temptations would release another album after the reunion tour called Surface Thrills. After the release of this album, Glenn Leonard was fired and replaced by Ron Tyson. At this point, there was 14 members of the group all together. Elvin Frank, how many? How many people have been in this group over the years, did you tell me? Well, now with Ron Tyson, it's 14. How, wait a minute, we better start, let, wait, we'll run down the line here and identify everybody that is now one of the Temptations. I'm Dennis Edwards. Melvin Franklin. Richard Street. Otis Williams. Ron Tyson. In the late 80s and early 90s, the Temptations were falling apart. Basically, they started to become irrelevant as they would release new songs, but people only wanted to hear the classics. Ali Ali Wilson would replace Dennis Edwards as he was fired again in 1984 by Otis for showing up late. The Temptations would release a song, 
Treated Like a Lady that starred Ali Wilson as lead singer. This song would miss the top 40 charts on Billboard Hot 100, but it did reach number two on the R&B charts. This was the group's biggest hit since 1975. In 1985, The Temptations would release another song called Your Baby that reached number 14 on the R&B charts. This song was written by the great Luther Vandross. Ali Wilson would get fired by Otis for missing rehearsals and stolen up late. Dennis Edwards would rejoin the group for the third time. Dennis became the only member to rejoin the group three times. In 1986, Blue would make his acting debut on an animated series called Pole Position that went on for 13 episodes. The next year, The Temptations would release an album called Together Again. The album would produce a number three hit on the R&B charts with I Wonder Who She's Seeing Now and Look What You Started that reached number eight on the R&B charts too. The following year, Dennis Edwards would get fired again by Otis. And for more information on the life and career by Dennis Edwards, go ahead and check out his story of in the description below. Ali Wilson will rejoin the group in late 1988. January 18, 1989, the Temptations was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Present was Otis, Blue, Ali, Ron Tyson, and Richard Street. They was joined by former Temptations members David Ruffin, Eddie Kendricks, Dennis Edwards. They will pay homage to Paul Williams by singing his song, Don't Look Back. Otis will go on to say that the whole day Eddie gave him the cold shoulder. A couple years later in 1992, Richard Street will have emergency surgery to remove kidney stones. He will miss a performance as a result. Otis will call Richard giving him an earful about no showing and Richard thinking Otis is being careless decided to leave the group in 1993. Richard Street was replaced by Theo Peoples. In the early 90s, Blue started to miss performances due to his health falling. Raymond Davis would fill in for Blue, eventually replacing him in 1994, when Blue had to retire due to his health getting worse. Now, no disrespect to Ray Davis, but he's no Melvin Franklin. Now, there's not much information on Blue's family due to him wanting to keep his private life private, but he was married to Kimberly English and they had five kids together. On February 15th, 1995, Blue, he will suffer from a series of seizures causing him to fall into a coma. And on February 23rd, 1995, Blue will pass away at the age of 52. Blue has submitted his legacy. His deep voice became the trademark for the Temptations. With this being said, out of all the Temptations, his shoes are the hardest to fill. I would like to thank all of my subscribers for watching today's video. And if you're not a subscriber, thank you as well. If you like what you see and would like to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you would like to receive a featured shout out on the next video, just stop over to our Patreon. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.